Before I could start making Mona, I really had to figure out how I was gonna make all the stars, which were going to be a problem because I live in an apartment, so I really couldn't make them out of the first choice, which would be EVA foam. That's a lot of little bevels to get perfectly shaped with a Dremel. I would have to sit outside for hours in a public space covering it in EVA dust. I'm also prone to hurting myself with Dremels, so that was out. Plus, I didn't have any luck finding a 3D printed version or a resin mold that would work, but I have seen a couple creators either make armor covered in fabric or make armor entirely out of fabric. So I started to wonder if there was a way that I could make the stars entirely out of fabric, because that would also mean I wouldn't have to paint them or worry about that paint ever chipping off. So after messing around a little bit, I came up with this. They're completely made out of fabric. They're not made with any toxic glue and they're really, really easy. Now, I've made a template for these brooches in Illustrator that is available for free on my Patreon. You don't have to be a patron to get it. You just have to promise to like this video or don't. Actually, I do believe you need like a Patreon login to download them. You still don't have to pay for anything. You just have to be able to log into Patreon. We're gonna start off with some thicker gold fabric. You don't need this one in particular, but this is a gold upholstery vinyl from SY Fabrics. Then on the back side, I'm going to fuse some Pelion 808 craft fuse. To attach it, you just iron it on. Then you can take your template and trace the stars onto the interfacing and with a straight edge, mark the center lines. Over on the sewing machine, you're going to sew down those center marked lines, but not around the edges. This does two things. The holes that you have in the fabric now are going to help fold it, while the stitches are going to help keep the fold straight. Now you can take that piece over to your ironing board and fold it down the center lines on the top side. Because vinyl can melt, you need to be sure to use a pressing cloth when doing the top side, but for the underside, you don't need to. On the first fold, you can put the iron completely on top of the piece, but for each following fold, you want to iron on either side of the center, avoiding ironing out the fold you did previously. You'll end up with two folds on the top side and two on the underside, and that order doesn't really matter. But once you have all four ironed, it's a good idea to fold up the piece in a little packet and pin or clip it together to cool. Once it's cool, this is where the magic happens. You want a very sharp pair of fabric scissors for this. You will see these cuts. So if you're using a dull pair of scissors, those cuts might not come out very clean. So if you want nice, crisp, clean edges, you need some sharp scissors. This process is the same for the little fat stars and the bigger skinny stars. So once you have both of them, we can move on to making the moon. Now the moon is essentially the same process, except it's much more finicky and frankly annoying. You'll want to draw a center curve and then stitch that line just like we did with the stars. Now comes the annoying part. To iron the curve, you basically have to fold a tiny section at a time. And when the moon is warm, not, not hot, you can kind of work it with your fingers. You don't need a super pronounced bevel for the moon. So if you can't seem to get a really sharp bevel, don't sweat it. It's a long and annoying process. So just go slow and do tiny sections at a time, making sure not to burn your fingers. Once you have that bevel, you can just cut the moon out the same way. Now that we have our moon and stars, we can move on to making the backing. I'm taking the same gold pleather and using the template to cut out a circle border and a red circle. Then I'm sewing them together on my sewing machine, just using a top stitch. I decided to use some tearaway stabilizer just to make the sewing a little bit easier. Tearaway stabilizer is used for like making embroidery and it's exactly what it sounds like. You just tear it off when you're done with it but it helps keep the fabric from moving around too much. So for something like this, when you're stitching a really curved line, it's really nice to have. Now that I have this doodad, I'm gluing it to a small circle of EVA foam. I believe this is six millimeter EVA foam from TNT Cosplay Supply, and I'm pretty sure you can get like four millimeter EVA foam from Joann's and maybe Walmart. You don't have to use EVA foam, but you just want something that you can get a needle through later but that's thick enough to give it a little bit of structure. Now we can start attaching these together. First thing I did was sew these little teardrop gems to the moon and this little angular one to the center of the star. 
An additional tip is I added a little blob of hot glue to the center points of the star and inside the bevel of the moon to keep the bevels really pointed. This did make it harder to get a needle through though, so only do this if you're prepared to work around the hot glue. I'm attaching the moon with some thicker thread. I leave the knot on the backside and make tiny stitches onto the moon. You don't actually need that many stitches to get it attached pretty well. Then I sewed the stars to each other before attaching them to the backing. You can be super strategic with these stitches and completely hide them by going through the sections on the underside. Because I was trying to film myself do this step, I had to hold the piece away from myself. So it was a little hard to see where my stitches were going. So mine are kind of all over the place, but you can hide them pretty well if you try. Then to get the stars on, I fold up the points of the big star and sew the corners of the small star to the backing with the same tiny stitches I used to get the moon on. It occurred to me after that if I had waited to put the Velcro on after this step, these stitches would be completely protected under the extra piece of pleather. But for some reason, I did it backwards. So do as I say, not as I do. Put the Velcro on after. But yeah, that Velcro is just sewn onto that circle and then glued onto the foam. This was the leg brooch, so I did a corresponding Velcro on the tights, but for the hat brooch, I attached a brooch pin. And you can buy those at like sewing stores and maybe Walmart. The last thing I did was add some rhinestones to the red sections, so I figured I would show you how to do the sewing pin method of attaching rhinestones. Basically, you get a regular sewing pin and then get a tiny blob of glue on the pin, pick up a rhinestone from the underside, flip it over, and place it down, holding it down with your finger. So I'm using Gemtac because it's non-toxic. And like I said, I live in an apartment, but this technique works a little bit better with E6000 because E6000 holds onto the gem a little more firmly than the Gemtac does. It makes flipping it over a lot easier. With the Gemtac, the rhinestone likes to rotate downward, but Gemtac is non-toxic and E6000 is pretty toxic. So that choice is up to you. But with those on, the brooches are done. I hope you liked this video. I have officially started working on and filming my progress on Sangonomia Kokomi. You're getting a wig video, a robe video, an undergarments, underwear video, and I'm making her god jellyfish. So subscribe if you want to learn how to make a jellyfish. Or watch me fail to make a jellyfish, because either way, if it doesn't work, I'm still going to show you. Thanks for watching. Bye. Wind Waker camera out sound effect. Has anybody noticed yet that my sound effects are all from Wind Waker? Someone notice, please.